eye on the sky, four objects shot out of North American airspace in the last 10 days. We do know that the first object, which flew over Canadian airspace, was a Chinese surveillance balloon. But questions are swirling with very few answers about the other aerial objects and what kind of threat they could pose. Let's talk about that with The Front Bench. With me this evening, former New Brunswick Premier Brian Gallant. He's the CEO of Space Canada. Former Conservative Deputy Leader Lisa Raitt. She's the Vice Chair and Managing Director of Global Investment Banking at CIBC. CTV News political analyst and former NDP leader Tom Mulcair is here, as is the Toronto Star's Queen's Park Bureau Chief, Rob Benzie. Hi, everyone. Very good to see you. Uh, Lisa, I'm going to start with you because just before we started this program, uh, General Wayne Eyre, the Chief of Defence Staff, was walking into Cabinet uh, to brief them on this matter. I know you've sat around that table. How eager would you be for some answers on this stuff right now? Well, very much so. It's a serious situation. A briefing from the CDS is incredibly important in order to be able to help you determine what it is you can and cannot say to the Canadian public. Now, I mean, 10 years ago when I was in cabinet, we did not have so much social media like TikTok or Twitter and Facebook as people have now. So there is a lot of information slash misinformation out there with a lot of people taking on the role of themselves trying to be news reporters and giving context to what is happening or what's not happening. It is extremely important for the leaders in this country to come forward and tell people exactly what's going on in very clear terms because otherwise you're going to have a lot of problems with respect to people assuming that some things are not quite what they think is are like something is out there. Yeah, and we've seen, Tom, to that effect, I mean, you've seen officials from both the U.S. and Canada get questions, hey, are, are there aliens involved here? Like, I mean, it, it's gone pretty far. I think Lisa makes a good point, though, about in the absence of information, it's kind of like a whole new world, right? There, there's not just what happens on social media, but then there's even the amount of information you produce for Canadians relative to what the Americans are producing, which is uh, normally uh, quite a bit more, right? And, and it kind of has been the case with this, too. I'll go out on a limb, uh, Vashi, and predict that it was impossible to have aliens crossing interstellar space <laughs> in a balloon. I'm, I'm just saying that <laughs> as a layman, uh, I find that uh, rather Thank unlikely. you for your insight, yes. It has been, <laughs> it's been a wake-up call for Canadians about the paucity uh, of our preparation and our equipment. We know that it took us years and years to finally order the F-35, and lo and behold, Stephen Colbert got it right last night when he said, and Justin Trudeau ordered that it be taken down. And it was an American plane that did it. So it, it is a bit galling for us to, to realize that the argument, of course, is, well, this is all part of NORAD. This is part and parcel of our deal with the Americans. But we all know uh, that we, we're still flying some very old CF-18s. And we know that whether it's our Leopard 2 tanks that we only were able to find four of to send to Ukraine, those were even bought used from the Netherlands, the same way we just bought a bunch of used F-18s from Australia. So Canadians are rightly worried about the equipment that we're leaving with the incredible men and women who, who serve in our military and they deserve better. But Canadians who are concerned about this also deserve to have equipment that's up to date and, and we simply don't. So I think that that's going to be part of the discussion going forward. Yeah, it's interesting, Brian, because it's, it's made me think over the past little while. I mean, I, I feel like, and I know you've all been around for the same thing, I've covered so many different stories of lag procurement or underinvestment in the military, and to be fair to governments under, under multiple different parties, right? And often the mm -hmm. thing is, and, and most analysts I've interviewed will say, like, it's not what drives votes. And I'm wondering if that changes when we witness what's witnessed, what we have witnessed over the last 10 days, if you think it might. I believe it will give Canadians a reason to sort of look at the stars, if you will, uh, pun intended, to sort of see what's happening up there, try to think about what this means for them, their security, what it means for the country, sure. But but I still <laughs> believe that the old adage that it's not necessarily something that would be driving votes, especially at a time when we have an affordability crisis, inequality that is really rampant and, and certainly on top of minds of Canadians. So so it is probably not the best vote getter, but that doesn't mean it's not important. And, and I want to sort of add on to what Tom mentioned. I mean, let's start off with the idea that the federal government is uh, engaged on the idea of investing more in the military. It's two budgets in a row that actually investing in defense and modernizing NORAD has a very strong position within the budget speeches. Uh, so, so definitely they, they recognize that this is a need. Um, and, and I think we have to put into context here a few things to add on to what Tom said. So, so NORAD, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, it's after the Chinese incident with the balloon that 
the Chinese balloon that it that actually readjusted its filters to sort of enhance its capability to see slow moving objects. So so that's the explanation that is being given in part. They're saying, you know, this might just be the, the amount of objects might just be because we've enhanced our ability to sort of spot them because of that incident. If that's the explanation, it just means that there have been objects flying over our airspace that are problematic for quite some time and, and clearly quite frequently. So, so for me, one thing with my CEO uh, position with Space Canada hat on, I'll say, is, is we do need to invest, uh, we believe, in doing everything we can to strengthen our abilities uh, for surveillance of space, surveillance from space. It helps with our security and sovereignty. It also helps ensure we have the data we need to fight climate change and, and, and be able to mitigate uh, natural disasters, amongst other great uh, uh, connectivity advantages that we can bring to our economy. Okay, um, I, and I do understand that um, specifically, Rob. You know, this could have been something that happens before, right? To, to Brian's point, that yes, NORAD sort of fine-tuned what they did after the first balloon, but that, that even though they may have been there before, we weren't shooting them down before, right? And, and I do think, just sort of from a layman's perspective. A lot of Canadians are sitting by right now sort of thinking, well, this is significant that we are shooting objects out of the sky, uh, that the Prime Minister is calling, you know, directing that to happen on a Saturday, that jets are scrambling. It's the first time that NORAD ever did that, right? And so I, 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 th I guess, and, and I'd love to hear what you think, that like there are political consequences to that, right? Like, there's a reason that we want answers. It's because we haven't seen that happen before. Exactly, Vashi. It's like something out of uh, a Cold War movie like Failsafe or something, where you have uh, jets being scrambled over Lake Huron and shooting down uh, this unidentified object. Now, the U.S. Uh, a US official is saying today that the other three, not the Chinese spy balloon, but the other three um, uh, objects may be, they, quote unquote, benign. But still, uh, to, to uh, Tom's point and, and, and Lisa and Brian's point, there's, there's an element of skittishness around there, around this now, thanks to the, the first Chinese spy balloon. So now we're kind of on edge. We do have an Arctic border uh, or, or an Arctic neighbor in Russia that is not a, a, a benign actor, definitely in the world, on the world stage. So we, we should be more careful. We do have uh, our, uh, a lag in equipment. I mean, I, it's, I, I, I'm surprised that no one's blaming John Diefenbaker for canceling the, the Avro Arrow in 1959, but there is an element of, of scapegoating pre previous governments for not investing in, in the military on the new equipment that is needed and the updated equipment that is needed. It's a scary situation, I think, for people thinking that, you know, not that we're being invaded or anything like that, but I just think you're in an airliner and a balloon, a Chinese balloon goes by or something like that. It could cause an accident to civilian air traffic. Well, that's really why they, um, part yeah. of the reason they, they determined it was a threat yeah. was because it was crossing over into, uh, into an area that there was a, other air traffic. Okay, I'm going to leave this part of our discussion there.